So, Clea, have you ever made uh, mistakes? <laughs> Me? Never. Right. Robbie's tips for artists because he loves you. Hola, you amazing artists. Today, we are going to talk about mistakes. Whenever I've done anything in life, uh, the one thing that seems to keep me in a place of being afraid of rejection or being afraid of anything and moving forward is the fear of making mistakes. And it's the one thing that will keep you in a place where you are constantly reevaluating things and making sure that everything is perfect before you move forward. Yeah, I'm a real careful human. I think I let this fear sort of paralyze me more than I'd like to admit. Yes. I have made tons of mistakes. It doesn't matter how smart you are, how prepared you are, or how anything you are, the fact is that you're going to make mistakes. I think what ends up happening is that when you're in school, you get kind of ridiculed for the mistakes that you make instead of it being like just this thing that happens. We all make mistakes, it's not a big deal. In fact, in writing this book right now, there are typos and grammatical errors and things like that. Like the idea of writing a first draft, it's almost like there is this fear that comes up that if people find out that I type with so many typos or so many mistakes, that I'm gonna get ridiculed and people aren't gonna take me seriously. I think a lot of that has to do with dealing with uh, grammar Nazis. I don't have anything to do with that. Clee was a former grammar Nazi. I'm a reformed grammar Nazi, I suppose. Listen, I love grammar and punctuation. I think I was a little bit too like all up in your grill back in the day. The thing about it was, it wasn't so much you being a grammar Nazi, it was the way that I responded to it. Whenever you respond to anything, whether it is rejection or the fact that you made a mistake and you're embarrassed by it, pretty much can set you up to either feel discouraged and feel like a failure or to go the opposite way and be like, well, you know what? It's a mistake. That's fine. I'm going to learn from that mistake. I think at school you get kind of trained to avoid making mistakes. Oh, definitely. You get stars for doing good and yeah, you get penalized for doing mistakes. I'm currently fumbling my way through a series of mistakes and dragging my feet on making decisions and procrastinating right now because I'm in territory that scares me. I think when it comes down to it, whether you're making a big decision in your life or a small decision in your life, there is a chance that you're going to make a mistake. And it's not the mistake itself. It's not trying to avoid the mistake. Obviously, we want to avoid making mistakes, but we're going to make them. I think what's most important is, okay, so if I make this decision and it was a mistake, how do I come back from that? Do I come back from that feeling regret, feeling angst, feeling things like that? Or do I come back from it feeling much more empowered, feeling like, okay, I made the mistake. I had the life experience. Where am I going to go from there? The idea of avoiding something because you are afraid that you are going to make a mistake instead of jumping in headlong and figuring it out as you go is one of the things that causes us to just not move forward with something because we think we're going to make a mistake, whether or not it is making a big life decision or it's a small, tiny little thing like I'm going to pick this carton of milk versus this carton of milk. Or I'm going to join this gallery as opposed to just running for the hills screaming. Just to fill you in, Klee just became a member of one of the local galleries. So she's going through the process of that experience, which is great because it's pushing against a lot of comfort zone buttons. Yes, it's a, it was a challenge of not being a people pleaser, also not being overly demanding and inflexible, being willing to share the fact that I'm scared, being willing to work through those things. I was trying to push off actually putting my pieces in there and making it a reality. And there's an important point here in that you can make a decision and then you can change your mind. And I think we forget that. I can try this thing and if it really sucks for me, I can change my mind. And then five minutes from now, I can change my mind. But I think we're taught also that once you make a decision, you got to stick to that decision. And you got to see it through. You can change your mind. Making that decision going one way or the other is a mistake. Once you are feeling the repercussions of that, then you can make a decision based on the experience 
versus trying to avoid making that mistake by thinking out all the scenarios. Yeah, so it's then making a decision based on your real life experience versus trying to make decisions based on your predictions about what could happen. Problem with trying to make the predictions is that you don't have all the information. You don't have all the information physically. You don't have all the information emotionally. You do not know how you're going to feel until you're in that position. And it's up to you to either blaze that trail and go with it and trust that you can figure it out as you go or spend all your time trying to predetermine whether or not you're making a mistake or not, even though it's something that you know that you really want to try, you really want to do. Yeah, and I know that you guys know just as well as I know and I'm living it right now that your mind, when it's trying to predict outcomes, it comes up with the worst case scenarios most of the time. It does. So right now I'm like, everyone's going to hate me. Everything's going to be difficult. I'm not going to be able to learn the things I need to know. It's going to be scheduling conflict. Do you guys, do you guys think that anybody could hate Clee? <sighs> Other than the people that comment that say that they don't like your voice or whatever yeah, it is. those people. Or my face. So in this particular instance, I'm forcing myself to take this one step at a time. Just try to just work my first training session. Just put a couple pieces in there and just see how it goes. Knowing that if it doesn't work out, I can decide then. What about when you make a mistake with something that you created? There is one thing that you created that I think about. Although I know that you've made mistakes and you've like really recuperated and, and recovered from them when you're working on a piece of jewelry, uh, but the impractical bracelet. So the impractical bracelet was this bracelet that was like a culmination of a bunch of mistakes up until the end point. And I remember looking at this thing and being like, that's hideous. And I was like, it's abstract. The thing that I loved about it is that instead of you looking at that as a failure and throwing it away, you actually decided to go the other direction and say, yeah, it's the impractical bracelet. And you put it out there anyway. And I sold it. And Yeah, and you sold it. That was what was most inspiring for me because there was this fear of like, what if I do something wrong? What if I make a mistake with this piece? What if the thing that I'm trying to say is wrong? What if people criticize me or ridicule me or, or whatever it is because I've I've done something wrong or I've made a mistake. The impractical bracelet is hilarious. Yeah. I remember looking at it as a serious art critic and being like, I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. But then your response, you were so like, whatever, I love it. It's impractical. Yeah, I know. It's the impractical bracelet. I thought that was awesome. And understanding that mistakes are hilarious. They and are unavoidable. Hilarious. Yeah, they're unavoidable, but they are hilarious. You could go either way with it. You could either be like, yeah, I screwed that up or be like, oh, I screwed it up. That's it. It ruined my entire life. To show you how hilarious mistakes are, I've got something for you guys. For you too. She hasn't seen this yet. Oh boy. All right. You ready? Go slow. Accident porn area. Yep. <laughs> uh-huh. Interesting. Yep. Somebody said there was, not only did one person make a mistake, but there were a group of people that needed to put this sign up in order for this mistake to become a reality. P-Face? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Oh, that's really good. And there were editors <laughs> and all kinds of people involved in this one. Nobody even cares. I don't even care who was the one that made them this mistake. I'm just happy that they did. Love is sweat. <laughs> Love is sweat. It is. Homemade crap dip. Yep. Mmm, I want a heaping bowl of homemade crap dip. It must be good. It's the most expensive item on the menu. <laughs> no oh, regrets. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, no regrets. That's freaking brilliant. That's awesome. What I'm hoping is that this person, that's what they wanted. Yeah. They wanted something that said, hey, man, no regrets. No regrets. This item is reduced due to misspelling of the word bird. Thank you. Brid. <laughs> I would totally buy that. I would buy that too. I'd be like, can you hand me my bread cup? <laughs> sure. <laughs> oh man, that's excellent. I like to say shul actually. It's like yeah. they did that just for me. Believe a chive. Yeah. A chive. 
Believe and achieve. Believe and achieve. That is the message, you guys. Make sure that you achieve all of your dreams. That reminds me of when we were watching that uh, show where they were doing the cosplay stuff. Mm -hmm. They said plague. She kept calling it plague, and she kept calling it plague throughout the entire series. And I was like, is no one going to tell her that she's saying plague? No, and I thought, does she know something I don't know about how you say plague? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> plague. So now we call it plague. Oh no, the plague is coming. Ah! I like Miss Edwards. She is my teacher. I like when she does meth with us. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so innocent. There's nothing there. And like, we just find it hilarious. And I feel like that's the way that we should approach it when we're adults. You just find it hilarious because it's fun. It's mm -hmm. fun. When, when people make mistakes, like this, you know, where it's not detrimental. I mean, if a heart surgeon makes a mistake during a surgery, that's not, that's, that's not what I'm, ha ha ha, like, that's not what I'm talking yeah. about. But stuff like this, creatively speaking, like, we don't need to take ourselves so serious. It's usually cause for a good laugh, which is awesome. One of my customers recently, when I was designing the men's ring, she said she was proud to have the first ring of my men's endangerment line. Yes, that's right, I remember that line. <laughs> and I saved that text because I hashtag died laughing. <laughs> the men's endangerment line. The men's endangerment line, and I was like, I'm gonna call it that. That's what it should be called. Your new men's engagement line should be called the men's endangerment line. I love Purchase it. at your own risk. <laughs> I don't even think we can say that. 100% <laughs> anus beef. Hardy's thick burgers. Think thick tonight. <laughs> oh, I'm man. not even sure if this is a real one. 5 p.m. 30 degrees warming up not ass cold. <laughs> They're right, 30 degrees is not ass cold. No, it's, it's not. It's only like sort of cold. Yeah, exactly. Lyndon B. Johnson School of Pubic Affairs. <laughs> and the Lady Bird Johnson Auditorium. Now we have it. An school entire school. Of pubic affairs. A shul. A shul. A <laughs> shul. In fact, oh man. Yeah, so this apparently is when you're signing those things at the doctor's office where you're filling them out. That would be one that I would check just because. <laughs> <laughs> skirmishes. Yeah, skirmishes. There have been losses. I mean, it's it's not good. Some victories. <laughs> That's real special. <laughs> of course, this would not be complete if I wasn't adding in my own uh, mistake that made it out into the world, which is... Within herself is the strength. Yeah, <laughs> she needs. So you guys, this was a big commission that I did. Clee saw this when it was finished and she did not catch it. The customer came and picked it up when it was finished and she did not catch it. And I did not catch it until probably about two years later. Yeah, I think it was when we were looking at the book of art pieces that you yep. caught it and you were like, um. If any of you guys paint words, you know that there is a big difference between writing a word and painting a word because you have to take your time with each and every single letters. Or stamping a word in metal. Or stamping a word in metal. So you have to like really pay attention to the words that you're using because your brain just kind of skips over and then fills in the information when you're looking at it where you don't catch it. I had a choice at that moment when I was going to put it in my art book, either hide this thing away and pretend like it never happened because I was ashamed of the mistake that I made. And what I did was I published it. There's no reason to run away from your mistakes. And honestly, I was inspired by your impractical bracelet. I was like, you know what? I'm going to make mistakes in my art career. I got to be okay with that. So... I have a similar thing that happened. I had a pendant that I was supposed to be stamping Owen, the name Owen. I stamped O-W-N and left out the E. I can either scrap this piece of metal or do something with it. So I had already stamped own, so I stamped it. <laughs> own it. <laughs> And it's the own it pendant. <laughs> the own it pendant. Sometimes you're able to recover from your mistakes like that. Sometimes your mistakes are already out in the world and either you could own them or you run away from them in fear and hope that nobody points it out. I would much rather own my mistakes and be able to laugh about it than to be paralyzed by the mistakes that I've made or the mistakes that I might make in the future. I guess at the end of the day, the entire message of this video is you're gonna make mistakes. 
choose now how it is that you're going to deal with them or that you've dealt with the mistakes that you've made in the past. As long as you're not putting anybody in danger and it is a creative expression type of mistake, whether it's in writing, in music, or in art, or in jewelry, um, be willing to own those mistakes. They're yours, they're part of your growth experience. So have fun with them. Don't let them become this serious thing where it's like a symbol of my failure because it's not. Shame. 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 Don't let yourself stagnate or be paralyzed. Make a choice and understand you can change your mind afterwards. Yes, you can. And that's it, you guys. Hopefully this video had some good information in it. We just wanted to throw together a video and talk about mistakes based on the fact that Klee is going through that whole gamut of stuff with the new gallery. Navigating my mistakes in real time. And you should know also that we made several mistakes in recording this video. Yes, a lot of mistakes. If you guys want to share some of the mistakes that you've made that you've been able to laugh about, I would love to hear them. Just put those in the comment section below. And thank you so much. <laughs> and thank you so much for watching, you guys. I think you guys are absolutely awesome. I totally adore you. And if you like this and you want to watch more like this, just click right over here to subscribe. And that's it. Say goodbye, Clee. Good day. Adios.